This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl. Power on. Power on. It's time to take your place on the starting grid and get ready for Racer Radio. Your host, Dave Stahl, about to take you for a white knuckle lap around the motorsports industry, covering everything from top notch national drivers and crew chiefs right down to your local kid racers and racetracks. Watch for the apex, because here comes Racer Radio with Dave Stahl. Folks, welcome to Racing Radio, right here on FM 96.1 AM 1170. The answer. That's our girl, Brittany. She's been with us all day today. All right, well, this is Racer Radio. It's a little bit of a different show today. I don't know if anybody in the racing community has heard, but uh, our good, 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 good friend, uh, Ron Esau, passed away last week. And you know how Brittany and I are. We like to do tributes, uh, mainly it's for the family. We are going to have some folks call in today, and we have such a special guest in the house takes me forever to get this guy out of his motor home but we got tiger tom mcgrath in the house how you doing budsky i'm doing real good dave doing real good listen to that voice folks all you call speedway people if you don't remember that guy man and and i use you as an example every time he i talk about, about you it now, all the time i do he talks about you all all, I can't believe I'm sitting at the table with you I know. elbows. I know. Well, because what Tom would do, and he was, when it comes to announcing, nobody does it better. Scott does an awesome job, Delosi, because he yes, does the he same does. thing Tom does. He knows the drivers. He mm-hmm. knows their family. He gets to the racetrack hours, hours early and spends most of your time in the pits, right? Absolutely. And that's how you met Ron. I met, I met him, yes, in the pits, yeah. But I met him after I bought my stock car. Oh, and, oh and, that's right. You did uh, used to drive. Mm, yes, Dave. <laughs> Get that straight. It was an illustrious two-year <laughs> career. Oh wow, whole two years. And I did win a race. That's yeah. right. <laughs> well, in the parking lot, but he still oh, yeah. won the race. <laughs> and we also have uh, uh, we also have David Esau in the house. His son. He's not going to really chime in unless he wants to by the way anytime ra- you want radio rule put your finger in the air that's in, ca- yeah, in case you <laughs> want to talk and we're just going to sort of reminisce you know because there's a lot of folks out there that knew ron uh, tom's probably got more stories on ron we're hopefully we're going to get we that. haven't got that time you know yeah well isn't isn't that the isn't that the truth and uh, ron was uh, I, but i'm going to have to tell one cute story on ron because I got to get this off my chest. <laughs> I know. But it. there was a gentleman that uh, had ALS, and I cannot think of his name. Is Jim? Wish I could think of the name. But anyway, we were doing a charity event for him because he had ALS and he was not feeling well. And uh, Dave Salas had donated a Dale Earnhardt Senior driving suit, and everybody knows I'm a big Earnhardt fan. Oh yeah. On the paperwork, it said extra large so i thought well shoot i'm gonna get this maybe i'll wear it as a costume party or something so the paperwork is there and i didn't couldn't even see the driving suit so it was a silent auction so i put 50 ron comes over and puts 75 i looked at him i go okay so i put 100 he comes over and puts 125 i go hey i'm only doing (laughs) radio i don't have a lot of money and he goes (laughs) <laughs> he walks away <laughs> so i watched that nobody else was going over there he got me up to a 225 dollars nice and then it turned out the driving suit was a small oh okay <laughs> but it's hanging in my front room right to the left of my big tv and every time i look at it david i have to tell you i think of your dad because he just thought that was the funniest thing. When so he, every Halloween, Michelle has to put yeah, that suit on. I don't even think she <laughs> can get in it. That's the sad oh, thing about goodness. it is. But yeah, no, it, it sits right in there. So from your memories, tell, tell us, I mean, if he helped you get into a race car, that had to be huge. Well, when you... Uh, Jimmy Watkins, ALS. Thank you very much, whoever that person was. <laughs> yes, that's, that's the right name. Yeah, that's the right name. But... No, when I bought the race car from Jim Bridges, uh-huh. who was at that time. What year was this, would you say? 1974. Okay. And I, I bought it from Jim uh, Jim Bridges, who was at, t- at that time the president of the Stock Car Association, mm-hmm. Jim and Dot Bridges. And, uh, you know, you get this thing home in your garage and you 
oh yeah, you can, I could I could fire it up, you know, and sit there and listen and brum, 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 and all that kind of stuff. Didn't you have the owner's manual? Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> if you ask me if I read it, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I start asking questions from the guys. I'm going, where do I, you know, where do I go get a little basic 101 race car guy school uh, type yeah. of thing? And they gave me some names like Bill Shannon and yeah. Jim, uh, uh, and, and then, of course, the Esau name and family came up. And uh, so they go, well, George's shop is right over here on, you know, on uh, Pioneer Way. Just go over there and stop by. They, and this is Ron's dad. Ron's dad. Right. right. And George and Ron and Larry, you know, all work there along with the rest of their crew. And and the their race car shop was right there as well. Well, you know? of course. Uh, and so I stopped by there one day and I'm going, hey, you know, do you think you guys could give me a, good, a, a little help with this thing? You know, and they go, we'd be more than happy to do so. Yeah. And that was the thing is in, at Cajon in the super stock days in the early, in the late 60s, early 70s, it was a very tight lip group of competitors yeah. they didn't tell you nothing they didn't want to tell you nothing <laughs> even if you wanted to pay for it yeah. but you know the esaws they wanted to help you they yeah. wanted to make you better because it would make them better exactly right. give them somebody competitive to race with eventually once you get down there yeah you know and so there were times when at that time in the early uh, in the super stock days we didn't have the everyday practices that they had later on when steve opened the track to rent it in the afternoon right uh, because of insurance reasons and what sure. have you. And so uh, Saturday was the only day you could go out and test. And that was the same day we race. Mm -hmm. Right. So they had the ambulance and everything out there. They, in the morning, it was open to the guys that maybe had a blown engine the, the, the week before mm -hmm. or had a serious crash or, you know, rookies like me that wanted to get some help and experience. Mm -hmm. And Ronnie was more than helpful in coming out there with me every Saturday morning, right. even though he had work on his own car to do. And he'd get in my car and go out and take over some laps and come back in and tell me, yeah, you need to do this, you need to do this, or wow. we need this kind of a spring here, we need that kind of a shock here. I mean, he was very, very, and for at that time, he was like 20 years old. He was a kid. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but he it was so knowledgeable. And, and he, he learned was that, that from his dad. Absolutely. Yeah. So, oh, he, yeah. so he learned that from his dad. And, and, and I have to say, David, every story, every person I talked to prior to doing this show mm -hmm. all said the same thing. Yeah. He would always do whatever he could to make you better on the track. Right. Because you know what I do. There's some guys out of Columbia. Mm -hmm. anyway, I wouldn't tell you anything. Oh, yeah. If they told you anything, it might not even be yeah, right. The opposite. <laughs> or they would they tell you the win. opposite. Yeah, 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 yeah. Run this spring. You know, yeah, put, yeah, yeah. put an 1,800-pound spring on the right yeah. front. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And you don't need air in yeah. the left rear. It's okay. Yeah. You really don't. Yeah. Well, and and it really didn't make any difference what division it was either. If I'm not uh -oh. if I'm not mistaken, no. right? No, not at all. I mean, he still. I think he, you know because and then his career, uh, according to David, started in dirt. Yeah. You know, so are you happy now? That's fantastic news. Well, I know because if I didn't think he started off in dirt, you'd be all upset. All right, we're gonna take a quick break. We come back. By the way, I, I got to figure out who this phone number is because somebody by the name, you know somebody by the name of Debbie Clark? Yes. Remember we that? Do. Remember, yes, I, I remember, do. I remember Debbie, too. Kevin Clark was her, is her husband or was her husband. I don't know. Uh oh, be careful now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm getting That's uncharted That's it. Don't get us in trouble. But, All right. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back to Racial Radio, we got a whole lot more to talk about with uh, Ron Esau, uh, Tom McGrath, and Brittany. She's all happy. He's on dirt. AM, FM, or AM, FM, FM. See, I'm all messed wow. up. Racer Radio, <laughs> FM 96.1, AM 1170. The answer. Hey, welcome back. You are listening to Racer Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The answer. We got Dirt Dude on the line, but first we're going to talk to Jared Baxter. Jared, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing well. Hope you guys are. Well, you know, it's kind of a sad day, but it's a good day because we're getting some great stories on Ron Esau. Kind of get what, what? What have you got to contribute? Well, uh, back in the day, like Ron and I would argue all the time, who was going to be the next driver for the Wood Brothers car. Uh, we were both 
we were both way off base. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, so, so we just uh, we just raced a lot around San Diego and then uh, in the in Southern California, and, and then um, I had the opportunity to uh, get an investor that would uh, help me build cars on my own. Uh, so in 1986, it's the year they started the Southwest Tour, mm-hmm. and uh, my first car that was my design, the whole deal. Uh, Ron got so he took a chance on me and then he ended up winning it all I think he won I don't know he won four or five races and won the championship and uh, and that really helped him but it helped me to get my career started wow so would you say this well he was truly a true racer I mean he could get into a car and he could really just by driving it tell you what to do what to change to make it a better ride or was it all driver? No, no, he was, he was pretty good at telling you what was going on. Uh-huh. Uh, a lot of the drivers, you know, especially, you know, nowadays, um, I don't know if you know what I do or not, but I've been crew chief in the 43 for Richard Petty for the last couple of years. And, and uh, now I, uh, now I'm doing the truck series, but a lot of the, the drivers will kind of make up things that they think is right or think is wrong where Ron was pretty straight up. Here's what's going on. Right. So, you know, that would just be easier for me, you know, for my job to make that thing turn better and, and go faster. So uh, that, that was pretty special. Now, were you uh, dirt, uh, dirt and asphalt, both? What, what would you mainly do with Ron? Uh, asphalt. Okay. All asphalt. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and who, who are you crewing for uh, in the truck series? Uh, I just moved over to uh, David Gilliland, who's ah. in California. Yeah. Um, and uh, the driver is Tanner Gray. Yeah. And uh, he's from New Mexico. And um, I'm really, really looking forward to it. You know, uh, the Cup Series is quite the grind, as you know. <laughs> and um, so uh, I just looked at it like, you know, 23 races compared to 38. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's just, it's my time to do that, you know. Yeah. Well, at least you're staying in, in the race season. So. So when you did the Southwest tour with Ron, and I should have known Southwest tour is asphalt, not dirt. Like I mean, you didn't correct me, you old man. Well, you were thinking about it. Uh, well, I wanted to let you run with it. Like they say, you don't want to pull a hook out of the guy's mouth too fast. You know, let him run with it, then set it. Snag you know? that rascal. <laughs> so uh, how long did he stay with you with the Southwest tour? Well, you know, I was building uh, customer cars uh, uh, that whole time. I had a ch- chassis shop and Ernie Irvin worked with me and Ivan Baldwin and oh, yeah. uh, we built, we built a lot. I uh, think built about 350 cars in 10 years. Uh, had quite a few, quite a few wins, obviously, but quite a few championships mm-hmm. with different people, Dan press and Doug George and Toby Butler and just on and on a lot of them. But, um, uh, Ron taking a chance on us to start with was pretty big for the company. And, uh, and we went on from there. So by you making that statement, it sounds to me like Ron had been racing quite a bit before he got to you. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. He, he, I don't know. I don't know when he started. I think he was like, I'm, I'm going to guess like around maybe 1973 uh-huh. or something like that. Uh-huh. And, uh, and he was fortunate enough to be able to race at a lot of venues, not just at Cajon Speedway. Right. He went all around Orange Show and Saugus and, 605 and uh, Vegas, just, you know, he was, he was fortunate. And then he went to Phoenix and, and did well there. And he did the West series and um, won a few races there. That was, that was pretty cool. And, and uh, you know, we all loved it because he was from San Diego. So sure. That was good. Yeah. And, and, that, and that's, that's the same thing I've heard as well. I mean, pretty much, Hey Ron, you want to go race? He didn't really care what it was, where it was. He was there. Right. Right. And he, and he did a really good job of, of uh, generating funds at the time, too, you know, because, you know, that's the biggest challenge mm-hmm. in stock car racing, no matter what. But he did a pretty good job. You know, he had uh, he had a lot of backing for McDonald's. Um, obviously, his father helped a lot. But um, he did a good job of promoting himself. So that was good. I My personal opinion from the and, – and, Tom, you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think if he would have had the backing – I think he would have definitely got into uh, NASCAR. Well, that we had that discussion many times. Did you? 
and a lot of racers that came through Cajon Speedway that were locals, they they mold that over themselves. Mm -hmm. But Ron, I don't, and David could also shed light on this as well. There's you got to be so driven, mm -hmm. yeah, to want to pick up your family and mm -hmm. everything you own and move back to the East Coast because. Yeah. You got to, you know, yeah. you know, like Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, they oh, all, yeah, they had yeah. to move back there, yeah. you know, and work right, right close to the factory and right close to the shop right. where their cars and stuff yeah. were at. And Ron just didn't know, want to make that commitment. Exactly. Yeah. And, and George, uh, I mean, he would have supported him, you sure. know, his dad, another guy I keep, I don't want to forget in all this when you, cause when you were talking about set up a cars and mm -hmm. if he, how knowledgeable he was, one of the knowledgeable Esau's was uh, David's uncle, Uncle Larry. Larry was a wizard. Really? And he helped Ronnie as much as anyone in terms of figuring out a track, figuring out a car. Uh, George was more than glad, happy to pay the bills, but if you George, ask if George, you ask wrote George, the check. Yeah, yeah. If you ask George, well, how's the handling? You know, and he goes, yeah, I, don't I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it goes left. But I haven't I'm not got a... any brakes or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Go ahead, Dave. Yes, yeah, so Larry started driving first, and that was yep. go karts. And then when Larry went moved on to the cars, he got my dad into it. Really? So that's kind of how it started. And Larry actually got George into it first. Absolutely. <laughs> no kid. In fact, your dad ended up back in go karts. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. I, well, there's three in the garage right now. That's yeah. Three in the garage right yeah. now. That's right. That's why. Well, I, see, George. You know, George uh, promised Larry. Larry was about to, ha as a kid, was about to have a real serious operation. Mm. And uh, he told me, he says, well, you got to have this, son. And if you get through it all right, I'll buy you a go-kart. And Larry did. They went up, went up to L.A., bought a go-kart with all the trimmings and fixings. Sure. And then the first time they took it out, they went to a track in San Marcos. For the love of me, I don't know where that one's at. Cause, it's you gone know, now. It's gone now. Yeah. But anyways, they got out to the track. George gets Larry in the cart. He takes it out for a lap, maybe two at best, comes in. And George goes, I want to go. I want to, I want to get in. I want to take some laps. So George gets in and he starts running and he's going around and around. And they're, you know, after a while, they're come on in, to come, on in. come on in. He keeps on driving. He ran the car, the cart out of gas completely. And then he goes, what's, what's wrong, wrong with this thing? Yeah. You know, I, you know, I can't get it to run anymore. And he goes, well, it's empty. <laughs> But for both of them, that's where it kind of started. Wow. Yeah. So it, it kind of just ran in the family, really, it sounds like. Yeah. So, so, so Jared, uh, you've probably have been staying close to his, his career the whole time, right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, once you, once you start that, you can't go away from it, you know. And, uh, you know, I've been living in North Carolina for quite a while, since the 90s. And, sure. And uh, it doesn't, doesn't matter. You're still, you know – fond of your your people you right. know where you're from so you know i had to stay doing that for sure well and they're and they're the and they're the ones that got you there you know so to speak and 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 that right, was right. kind of with when you became friends with ron it was for life no matter where you were at uh and he's worked uh who's that oh listening or on oh okay what's his last name <laughs> yes my assistant over here is trying to make me crazy uh, how am I doing? Yeah. And, and then, but there's, I, I, I can't even count. I don't know about you, Tom, how many drivers in town were touched by the Esau's. Uh -huh. I mean, a lot. Oh, a lot. A yeah. lot. And you then, would go Monday afternoons was the get together for bench racing at the Esau's. Yes. That's, uh, what's, that's what Mondays are for. And I would go there after I got to know everybody and, and kind of felt comfortable with everybody. I'd stop by on my way home because I lived in Santee. So I, 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 at the time. Yeah. And I, and I would stop by and you know, you never know who you'd run into. Right. Len Chenoweth, who wasn't a circle track racer, yeah. you know, noted for the dune buggies yeah, and yeah, off-road yeah, racing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would always be there just to, be in the corner just listening to the the stories joke. yeah and then you know mcintyre bartley uh you name it they would be they would come by and say hello and tell their they'll tell their story and ronnie of course just lapped it up he loved it oh yeah you know and larry would be over there in the corner just writing yeah, <laughs> yeah. the only guy working yeah right everybody else <laughs> 
Uh, by the way, we've got Dirt Dude on the line, too, so we're not giving up on you, Dirt Dude, uh, so just hang with us. And Bear, before we go, can we double-check our caller's name? Is this it, Jerry or... Is it Jerry or Jared? It's Jerry. Okay. Where is that? I wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna embarrass well, you. Well, that's okay. I'm, that's okay. I get called Bob Stahl all yeah, the time. You do. So now, is no this the, hey, is this the Jerry Baxter? That's the son of Bob Baxter. He. That's him. Okay. Well, that's by him. God, darn it, dude! Uh, if if it these out. guys hadn't have screwed up your name, <laughs> I would have known you right away, that's, dude. Who's that <laughs> board up in there? Is. That rascal yeah, boy. You're never getting another egg. That's all there is to it. <laughs> we're we're all on the same page so, now. We're so all now on we the same we're just page. we're in the circle of brilliance. This is great. Yes. Yeah. You have you an know, authentic, Tom, real gonna, guy there. <laughs> you do. I was going to try and get your contact after the show, Tom, and call you. Because I think we probably haven't talked in 30 years, you know? Absolutely. Wow. I, I'd love to hear from yeah. you. Well, yeah. before you hang up, we're going to have you talk to my illustrious board op, and he'll get your contact info, and I'll share it Good. with Tom. And now that Tom has figured out how to find this place, <laughs> we will have him yeah. back on. I'm gonna lasso you and in. I would love to talk to your new truck driver, seriously, because you know as well as I do, media is everything. And Absolutely. and your sponsors are always looking to see what have you done for me lately. <laughs> so right. we're going to have to take a break. If you want to stay on, if you have the time, we're going to take another break, come back. And if you want to chime in and, and tell more stories or uh, and what have you, we would love to have you on. All right. I'll hang out for a little bit. Thank <laughs> you. All right. Till the wife tells you to go do something, then you can, you know, go. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break. This is Racer Radio, FM 961 AM 1170. The answer. All right, folks. Welcome back to Racer Radio, FM 961 AM 1170. The answer. But, hey, we, I, we've also got Dirt Dude on the line. Dirt Dude, uh, welcome to the show. Hey, I've been hanging out, listening. I don't want to hear nothing. you still got drawers to organize, so don't give me a static. So, uh... uh uh, Brandon uh, mentioned that maybe uh, down the road, uh, Cajo- uh, Cajon. Barona will uh, uh, help out with a charity race for uh, Ron. I'm sure something's going to come up here soon down yeah. the road. Um, we, we had lost our tow truck driver just at the beginning of the season, at the end of the season last year. So I know our, our second race is going to be a memorial for him. Good. This coming up so soon, I, I was surprised. I mean, I don't think Ron had ever been to our track much. If he had, I haven't really got a chance to – to interface with them much but i know every track every every racer at our track had background with him oh. you know either from asphalt or from dirt yeah. or you know touching bases with like you know their shop and stuff like that so right. it, it, it affected a lot of people so i'm sure we're going to try and do something right. um someone was actually asking me since you got tom in studio someone wanted to do a tribute night to cajon at barona sometime so i want to invite tom up sometime to announce with me but he's so expensive. <laughs> he needs a limo. He needs M and M's, just the blue ones, not any oh, other Ryder. colors. <laughs> and he Pepsi and a wheel oh. a wheelchair. Pepsi a, a wheelchair. No, not not oh. Pepsi. Pepsi. You're Pepsi. On your own oh, Pepsi. Pepsi. Anti acid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure Tom will be more than happy to do it because he sits in his backyard. He just calls the races. There, calls the races when he sees the mice running around the backyard. <laughs> no, that'd be well, great. I sent, him, I sent him a message. Uh, I'm sure we could work out something. Yeah. I'm sure if we um, once we find out what we're going to do, probably sometime a couple races in, we'll probably do something for Ron because, like I said, he had he had a lot of people oh, yeah. track that he knew. A lot of Cajon guys, and like I said, I, he probably came up there and watched people he that did. were racing still That's at Verona. That's where I met him. I met him. At oh, Verona. is that where you met him mm-hmm. up there at? Uh, Danny Brent put me in contact with him, okay. and that's how we got him on last January. Well, and, and you know, ever you know, ever since he passed away, and I started putting the word, it's really been amazing. The common denominator is he did so much for me in my racing, mm-hmm. and it's just ironic, you know, that because I mean, you mentioned it in the first part of the show. You know, a lot of racers don't want to share, you know, what they know because you know they may want you out there, but they don't want you to beat them. Exactly. He was just the opposite. Yeah. But I think his, t- I mean, I personally think his talent was right there. Jerry, what what do you think? Oh, for sure. For sure. And, 
you know, he was he was blessed enough to have his dad to help him out, which yeah. is just fantastic. And then and then uh, everybody looked up to him because everything he was winning all the time. Mm-hmm. Like that's what he did right. was win races. So everybody looked up to him, and, and uh, you know that's that's a big bonus, obviously. Yeah, and you know the other thing impressed me was the way he came to the track. I mean, his equipment was impeccable. I mean, clean, well done. I don't know who did his designs or his paint scheme. Tom, you might know. But he always, when he came to the show, kind of like Mr. Oberman, because mm. he was the same way. Their cars were pristine. Yeah, Oberman was right. was oh. the guy that set the tone the for gentleman pretty gentleman Oberman, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah. Right. I don't. I don't. I don't know who did the paint schemes on those cars, but they did a great job. But as far as the cars themselves, I think David Beat is mm-hmm. the one that like kind of headed up the show for him. Yeah. And they were nice. Very nice. God, I haven't heard David Beat's name in a long. I time. I talked too. to David a couple of days ago. Did because you? We were talking about this whole thing. You know. Yeah. David was was uh, Ronnie's crew chief when he won the Southwest Tour. Gotcha. And the inaugural year, 1986. Uh-huh. Now, back up a little bit, you know, Ronnie started Superstocks in the early, early, uh, late 60s, early 70s. Mm-hmm. His car that was in Stock Car Racing Magazine, uh, pictured in the centerfold along with Ron Overman's, was a 62 Pontiac Tempest, or a yellow and blue. And I know because I made the body on it. That's right. You were Mr. Fiberglass. Absolutely. And my car was a 62 Pontiac Tempest. Did it go as fast? Not with me in it. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I'm sorry. It's well, been you a know, long time since you, I've seen you. You know, just to defend my honor here, <laughs> all our Saturday morning sessions, you know, Ronnie would come out and beat me by a second and a half. Yeah. You know? And then he'd say, well, try this, try this. <laughs> then we go back out. After about oh, nearly half a season of that, I started. I started catching him you really? know, to the point where we were about even. Yeah. And I then I looked at him after one session. I go, "Well, what's it going to take to go faster?" And he did the old rub the fingers together. <laughs> money, 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 dude. You know, the next day. In other words, your talent. A is, talent is, is, is carried me as far as, far as, as you're going <laughs> to. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Jerry, you are the. Uh, yeah. Jerry, you're the the product of a of a guy that had a father helping him out too, the the driver of the oh, blue caboose, Bob Baxter. Hey, yeah, he was um, he was actually smarter than most of them because uh, when you guys are talking about the Monday Monday afternoons, you know, get togethers at Esau Supply. Yeah, uh, my my dad was the one that was over there uh, gathering up all the stuff they thought was no good, yeah. and then he would go out he would go out and outrun them half the time. And Ronnie and George would get so angry. They're like, Jesus, we just gave him all this stuff and now he's beat us. He's still probably probably sore for the $40 I charged him for a right front fender on his Nova. (laughs) Yeah, he probably. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Hey, we got got another caller in. No relation to me, but Mr. Mark Stahl. Oh, my God. How you doing, Mark? (laughs) I'm good. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Keep yelling. Okay, okay. So you got a Ronnie? I, you got a Ronnie story? Well, I just wanted to talk about all the years at Cone Speedway that I competed against Ronnie, and um, you know we were we were good friends, but we were competitors. Um, but Ronnie was a good, honorable competitor to compete against. He never tried to wreck you. He would race with you cleanly. Um, and that was always enjoyable to do. You know, somebody you didn't have to worry about them crashing you. Mm-hmm. And uh, I know the whole racing world is going to meet, um, especially everybody from Southern California and the ones that got to compete against them. And I just, uh, to tell, you know, his family and friends and everybody that it's, it's a tough one for me and I'm sure everybody else yeah. and we're all thinking about him and, putting our thoughts and prayers in for the family. Well, we're going to do a memorial, uh, David. You're saying somewhere in April. We haven't quite locked a date in yet. April 3rd oh, from okay. 1 to 5 at the Lakeside Rodeo Grounds. Okay, and the reason we're doing that date is because we didn't want it to be we during a race it night. a lot of race, race in the day before. Messages. Yeah, because <laughs> your dad would be really upset if you're cutting into a race night. <laughs> 
So, Mark, uh, we'll keep you abreast on that. I'm sure you're going to – and I'm going to do something on KUSI. I'm sure you have all your race cars. Maybe we'll get one of yours to come down. Or you still got any of your dad's cars? Uh, No, but um, I – I have my my Nora truck that you've seen a few times. I know we got to hang out at the, at the yeah, yeah. awards one night at the, at the Nora the Nora Awards, but yeah. I might be able to bring that down then. Yeah, what that you know, every kind, all kinds of race cars. Well, man, it's really stay in touch with us. Uh, don't hang up when you hang up because, and I'm going to have uh, my board op give you my cell number, or you can get me on Facebook because we would love okay. to have you come in as well and sit and do radio and talk about the good old time because. You know, as much as I hate losing Ronnie, this has really been a – so far, we're not even done yet. It's been an, an amazing show. Um, yeah, and I, and I want to tell Jerry Baxter hi. I, <laughs> I, his, he and his dad let me wreck his race car at Cajon Speedway let. one night because I think my car blew up. <laughs> so I drove Bob's car, and somehow I know the whole ass end of it got smashed. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Jerry, do you know, do you know Mark Stahl? Oh, yeah, Absolutely. we know each other from, the, from Cajon Speedway and the East oh, yeah. Coast. We've we've hung out in from, in the garage right, and right. the NASCAR yeah. races. Right. Hey, Jerry, right. Good, good to hear from he you. Came back here for a while. Hey. Yep. Let me tell these two guys. Uh oh. The Baxters and the Stalls. Yeah. You know the Hatfield and McCoys. Uh oh. <laughs> that was it. No, oh. not the guys. The girls. Oh. Holly Stall and Barbara Baxter. Wait, they oh, raced we, on the pony po, uh, powder puff division. Really, the ladies right. only division uh-huh. when we had it. Uh-huh. Those two women went after each other tooth and nail every time they hit the track. I, I saw it. Barbara Baxter wad up in the entire Baxter running organization in one <laughs> night trying to get that fifty dollar championship trophy at the end of the year. <laughs> Bob was beside himself. <laughs> I bet you haven't heard that story in a while. Uh, <laughs> no, but I think they they were good competitors with each other too. I don't I don't think there was any animosity in between them. Oh I, no, I think they they just both wanted to win. Exactly, mm-hmm. well, exactly. What's that old saying? The acorn doesn't fall yeah. too far from the tree, you know, type of a deal. But yeah, yeah no, yeah. that's yeah. This is this is great. I mean, there's a lot. There's so many. Like I I keep saying it over and over. There's so many drivers that were touched by Ronnie. You know, I wish I, I, we may even do this again, you know, just because there's going to be some, you know, because oh. uh, you're going to post this yeah. on Facebook because you know how to do it. And I don't have a clue. <laughs> and more people are going to want to say, oh, we missed the show. We want to be part of it as well. Yeah. This, an hour isn't enough for this. For no, it, it, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely. And Becky McBride was going to be coming in today. And I was really hoping to see her. So I'm sure something's come up or hopefully she's at least at least listening because I know she's got. But the stories are just endless i mean I, am i right david i mean this thing could be a five-hour show easily yeah easily so uh so jerry uh let's uh you got any more stories sure. we got a couple minutes before we take a break then i'm gonna let you take off uh you know i don't have any that we can really put on <laughs> okay that's all i needed to hear you're golden we but- got lots of stories but we're going to just keep them in the pocket. All right. Yeah, keep them in the pocket. Yeah, keep them in the pocket. So, Jerry, I'm going to go ahead. Don't hang up. Uh, Br- uh, Brandon's going to get your phone number so we can stay in contact okay. with you because we, like I said, I'm more than happy to help your your new truck driver. Uh, I think you've got a star there, uh, and, I'll, and, and we will be more than happy to follow him through the series. He can call in periodically, win or lose, and talk about sponsorship and do whatever we can to help you uh, – help you make a success out of that absolutely all right good deal so mark you still running nora yes yep we're we're just about got the truck all prepped and uh the race is what about two months away from now two months away man that'll be that'll be great so you have a great time all right buddy hey uh again i can get you on facebook or uh brandon will get your name and number and We'll get you back okay. in, and we'll talk some more, you know, uh, about your situation, your series, your truck, and I'd love to ha- have people hear about the history of that truck. Okay, sounds good. All right, buddy. Hey, we're going to take a quick break, but Tom McGrath is not going anywhere, and nope. neither is David right nope. here on Racer Radio, FM 96.1, AM 1170. The Answer. 
folks. Welcome back to Racer Radio FM 961 AM 1170. The answer. So David was. Te- Remember, folks, we always tell you radio is always better off, off air, air than on air. <laughs> so David, tell us just Australia. I wouldn't go to Australia because it's what twenty seven thousand hours of flying. <laughs> First flight, I was eight years old. Uh, went over to Australia. My dad was racing at the Thunderdome. Finishes third, and I'm screaming in the stand, so excited. And then next to me is. I remember Sterling Marlin's son, and he's crying because his dad got second or something. <laughs> <laughs> How did he end up in all? I mean, who made that phone call? I mean, I don't know. I don't remember. He was eight, David. He oh, he's eight remember. years old. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then Tom, you were you had a just an eloquent statement off air, of course. Yeah. About the stock cars. Well, you know, Ron's career, as you said, we start. He started late sixties, early seventies, yeah. somewhere in there. But his career and his experience at, at Cajon. And other places, of mm-hmm, course, mm-hmm. literally transcended that in literally his entire life, mm-hmm. you know, because he started in the the good old, as we say, the good old days of the Elkhorn Star Car Racing Association, right. where these cars were literally hand built by everybody that raced them. They weren't just jig, jig built off of a, a chassis shop, you know, in Colorado right. or up in L.A. at Stock Car Products or something like that or Speedway Engineering and Frank Denny. And so they were they were really custom works of art, you know, mm-hmm. and everybody had a different you know, idea of how to go. Oh, fast, sure. Because you know? there was no yeah. nothing and some to work were, from. And some were, <laughs> yeah. you know, and we all know who they are. Yeah. We all know who you are out yeah. there. Well, guess what? <laughs> I think one of them is on the line. Uh oh. <laughs> do you know the name uh, John Borneman? Oh, yes, I do. <laughs> hey, John, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. How are you, Dave? Hello, Tom. Hey, Big John. I always call you know. I always called him GQ because he was the first guy I ever seen that had their Levi's pressed. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm serious, dude. His wife made him do it. I don't care. <laughs> that guy was GQ. He'd come walking in to the pits, and I'd go, "Wow." Oh, look at this guy. You missed his early Cajon Speedway days in the Super Stocks. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. There was no creased no, Levi's? Oh, no. no. <laughs> so, gosh, John, you're, talk you're about a me. name from the past. How you been? Well, I've been pretty good, uh, considering what happened last week. Yeah, yeah. And it uh, it uh, really knocked me on my butt, it's like everybody else. Yeah. Just, knew him, uh, just uh, it was... Just a couple of weeks ago, he was out at a go kart track up at uh, up at the Will. I forget what they call the little go kart track with my grandkids and my son. They were practicing go karts, and he called me after it was all done. And he says, "John, I'm the only guy that can say that they raced with three generations of Bornemans." Yeah. Oh boy! I said, <laughs> yeah. they "Whip you pretty good, Ronnie." He said, "Yeah, they're pretty fast." <laughs> In fact, there's a picture of all of them uh, up there racing it. It's my grandson, Byron Leedman, and Ronnie was second, my granddaughter third, and Johnny bringing up the rear. But, <laughs> yeah, they, they had a good time. Yeah. Amazing how, how happy he was, you know. I mean, anyway, I just want to remember him like that. And yeah. Saw him. It, was, it took me by surprise. So first thing I did Next morning, I couldn't sleep, and I started thinking, i got to tell some stories about the good old days with Ronnie. And, I mean, back in the day when we raced uh, speed, Speedway 605 up there, oh. um, I, back in those days, they, we raced also Riverside in Ontario, right? Right. Well, they wouldn't let us, they wouldn't let us race a sportsman race, and everybody would just cherry-pick Riverside in Ontario unless you actually race seven short track races on the short NASCAR short tracks. Uh-huh. So I had this, I had this nice T-Bird that I got from Clem Proctor to, to race up there. And NASCAR goes, Oh no, no, you got to have those races. I go, Oh no. George says, I'll make you a deal. He says, I'm turning this 57 Chevy that I dri- drive over to Ronnie. I want, he's got to learn how to drive. Why don't you take him up there with you? You qualify the car, you run the heat race, let Ronnie run the main event. He gets, Seat time, you get your races on. If you do that for me, I'll get you those seven races. Wow! And that's how that's how I actually met Ronnie. <laughs> First time he ever strapped in a in a car was with, with me there strapping him in, and just a kid. And in fact, Doug Fleming put a picture on Facebook that just 
tore me up. It was mm. of that car at that track with Georgia's. It was actually number five. We put a number one in front of it, made it 15. And mm. it was Ronnie, just a young kid with that bushy hair. And, <laughs> oh, Lord. Curious. Curious talk because you know what? From there, that guy went on to win everywhere he went. Yeah. I mean, you could name race talks, tracks all over the north. The north. Uh, he won everywhere he went mm-hmm. and different cars. I mean, driving for different owners, he was just multi. Don't get me wrong, he had some bad ones too. But <laughs> oh, sure. They basically, we all do that. But basically, he, he won a lot of races. He was a talented son of a gun, especially at Riverside. Yeah, he he loved Riverside. One of the most pictures I really loved that somebody put in there, it was Ronnie went a race at Riverside, one of his first ones, and had George in there holding the trophy. Mm. And George had a a smile from ear to ear. I mean, you could, what a happy. Yeah. Well, just, just so you'll know, so you'll feel better about it, since this is my show, I can do whatever I want with it. We're going to do this again. And we'll get some more airtime out of you because I know you got some unbelievable stories. And if we can find anybody else from the the good old days, I'm sure Tom knows just about most of them. We will do yep. this again. We are uh, going to do a tribute April the third Sunday, April third, out at Lakeside Rodeo. Maybe we can get you to come out. We're going to do some All KUSI, right. and then don't hang up, hang up. And I'm going to get my board up to get your phone number so that we can be in touch with you and let you know when the next race uh race next uh show starts and and keep you in the loop because you're definitely integral in this whole deal i tell you whatever you're doing for him i i thank you from the bottom of my heart because ronnie yeah he 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 says it and and i only have one other question do you still crease and iron your levi's that never happened. Oh, it did too. <laughs> oh, I've seen it. Don't even start with me. <laughs> if it. If it, if it was cre- I, I, my wife says you're the only guy I know that all you wear all your life is what white tennis shoes, white t-shirt, Levi's, and boots. That's my that's my outfit. That's and it right. had plaster on them. Dave, it had plaster on. Them. <laughs> that's true. They did. All right, buddy. Hey, man, it was awesome talking to you. It really, really was. So, well, don't hang up. Let my let Brendan get your uh, contact. I will. Keep up the good work, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Remember that one time? I don't know if you were involved, but there was a championship at Cajon, and I got Tamborelli, Overman, I think it was Borneman, and we were going to all, and I was going to get them all on the radio at the same time, and you said, are you out of your mind? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are you out of your mind? We did it. And, and, and if you, you what you didn't get amongst that group that would have been the the igni- the igniter would have been Ed Hale. <laughs> oh, I know, I know, I know, I, and I don't know. I think, but you know, that was back when I was dumb and doing radio. Well, David, <laughs> I, I can't thank you from the bottom of my heart to be able to give this to you and your family. We'll get you a copy of this, and, and I guarantee you, we'll get some more drivers together. Some of the ones that weren't able to do this, we'll do another show. Uh, and all you ever have to do is ask me for whatever you want, radio, TV, to honor your dad uh, down the road. Tom, I, you know, this is a terrible way to get back together again, but yeah. it's so good seeing you. I mean, I just I just can't tell you. Because, I mean, as Brittany knows, I used to sub for him every once in a while. Once Dawn figured out that I could talk. I know you didn't want to because no, it was big but she shoes figured to that fill. out. She <laughs> called me every time. Hey, you want to come out and call? You want to come out and call the races? Well, yeah, but it. But is Tom gonna take yeah. that? No, he doesn't know it yet. But can you come? Because <laughs> but we but I never, never, ever, 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 ever could come close to Tom McGrath. Ask him what he's doing with the mile markers when he travels with his wife. What are you doing with him? I'm announcing cars. <laughs> okay, mile marker eleven. <laughs> My mark- oh, that's uh, smiling Ed Hale. <laughs> you <Mile> actually mar- <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mile marker five. There you go. Five. John Mankey. Throwing out David. Fifty six. <laughs> yeah. Fifty six. George Esau. Oh my. Or Ronnie Esau. Or Ronnie Esau. Yeah. <laughs> you bet. Yep. Oh, I'm funny. telling you, what a great. You know, this is. I, I can't. You think. want sponsors too? Sure. Oh, you got sponsors <laughs> too? <laughs> yeah, I got sponsors too. Yeah, I know. That's I remember. Funny. I will tell one story on myself because 
like I said, he knew everybody. He knew their birthdays. Oh. He knew everything. I One time he wasn't there, and I go, hey, if you don't paint your name really big on the roof, I'm not calling it. Because <laughs> I couldn't remember. All right, we got to go, folks. Don't touch that dial. Gun Sports Radio, or Gun Owners Radio is right around the corner. Ronnie, God bless you. I know you're smiling. He FM This program is sponsored by Dave Stahl.